Hi, I'm Jay Jacobs, and welcome again to another episode of Going Beyond the Scale. On Fridays, we like to explore the world of food. We call it Foodie Friday, and sometimes we're sharing recipes. Sometimes I'm not a chef or really a cook, but every once in a while I might share something that I'm doing back here in the back of my kitchen. Um, we talk about books. We talk about some food-related travel. We typically talk about travel on Thursdays, but I want to share with you, I've, if you've been watching what I've been doing, I've told you guys when you start to do something you love and you start to just practice it, even if it's not perfect, and God knows if you watch what I do, there's nothing perfect about what I'm doing, nothing scripted. It is just me speaking with you and you guys sharing things with me. And what I've found is when you do that, literally things happen where people come out of the woodwork, people that you knew, people that you've had a great time with that maybe you haven't seen in a long time, they appear. Today's guest is a good friend of mine, um, Jessica, Chef Jessica Sweegee and I first met at one of my favorite early Starbucks in South Orange. Um, she was there, we met there. Um, we ended up doing some flywheel classes together. Uh, then we were at Veracity CrossFit and she was a beast at CrossFit and I was kind of a newbie with some of the things. So Jess and I started doing things together in the world of coffee and exercise and whatever and we had a great time and then she ran into a bit of a challenge and then she stopped going to crossfit and i knew she was always involved in food and she was doing things with catering and things like that but i have to be honest until she came out of the woodwork the other day and reached out to me and said hey would you be interested in american heart association um cycle for survival or some particular cycling event i said sure i'm always a yes for something i can support like that um, so she connected with me on that. I reached out to somebody and then I went back and I took a look at her website. I'm like, wait a minute, she needs to be on going beyond the scale because I knew she really was somebody that loved food and was really passionate about it. But until I went to her website and you'll be able to take a look at it and started to really understand what she's been doing and what she's been doing over COVID. I'm like, oh my God, she's the perfect person to talk to all of us about and we're, she's going to explain it, man. I'm going to do a little tease of this. She, in our conversation the other day, she told me about helping people overcome palate exhaustion. Never heard that said before. Love it. So with that being said, Jess, come on to the show. Hi, everyone. Thank so, you so much for having me. <laughs> always. I'm so, thank you for reaching out because um, I know from what you've been doing and what you've been sharing with people you were at the right place at the right time to start to share with a larger audience. As I told you, and we talked about a little bit, um, like I can't wait for you to have a, a LinkedIn profile as well, because I just think the more people hear what you're up to, I think there's going to be more and more people that want to tap into what you're doing. So we're going to get into your cooking, but just kind of give, give us a little bit of a background on you before you kind of got into the whole world of becoming a chef and what you've been doing. So what, where did that start for you? Um, well, it started for me initially. I had a background in potentially becoming a doctor, as every almost every Nigerian <laughs> child is, is pushed to become. So I went to Rutgers University and I graduated with a bachelor of science, exercise science, and sports studies. So that's where kind of my nutrition and um, diet and exercise background came from. Um, I ended up majoring in that because I wanted to get into started a functional human anatomy class, which used human cadavers. That was the only time you were able to use human cadavers at Rutgers University. So I took the major and I was interested in it more inclined about the food aspect of it. But it was a passive um, light of mine because I was like, okay, you got to be a doctor. You got to be a doctor. So then fast forward, I realized, you know what, Jessica, you're living your own life. Like you're doing what you want to do. You know, screw it. I don't want to do that. I want to be a chef. So I resigned from doing that and I started working in New York for about 10 years off and on um, intern. And, and then I started working for catering companies, um, then transitioned to work into Jersey. And then once COVID hit, I realized that the world of catering is going to be kind of dulled down for a while. So I decided to transition to doing virtual cooking classes as well as meal delivery services. Um, but I still miss my passion for traveling. So I wanted to kind of integrate both the two. So I ended up um, doing meal delivery services where I send out different meals, celebrating different countries every six weeks. Um, so it is healthier versions of what you would typically eat for that particular meal. So if you're doing like a, a biryani, it'll be a cauliflower biryani, cauliflower rice biryani, just something healthier so that it, the food is still fun for you. 
So then that's where this all transpired. And then through my connection, I kind of reconnected again, as, as Jay mentioned, um, with him to do a, a project with American Heart Association. And then here we are now. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the thing that I absolutely love in, in our, you know, getting caught up conversation the other day was um, the fact that, you know, you understand, especially because of your background, your education, you understand the importance of eating and fueling yourself with good quality food. And what I love about it is, like we talked about, what, what, what we talk about here is not about restrictions and dieting and, you know, everybody has different ways that they can find some kind of a way of eating that fits a particular lifestyle for them. What I love what you're doing is you're giving people the ability to kind of, um, you know, really taste a lot of the cultures of food and ingredients and things. And to me, it's adventurous to be able to do that. So I love that idea that every, you know, every, you said it was six weeks, you're, you're setting out different countries recipe or dishes. Yeah. So every week it changes. Um, okay. So you won't see the same country for like another six to eight weeks. So you're not, you don't have that palate exhaustion that we just, you brought up earlier. Yeah. So talk for, let's talk about palate exhaustion for a, a moment. Um, and I think I just noticed this is back to the idea of not being perfect. I think when I posted what I posted, I think I spelled the word palette wrong. We are not perfect. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> just want to call, I'm calling myself out on that. So I believe this is the proper spelling. So, okay. So let's let's talk about what does that mean to you? And what, what can people take away from what you're doing with it? Why does that mean something to you? What What is that all about? Okay, so for those who um, make the decision to quote unquote adapt a healthier eating lifestyle, your palate is so used to like the sad fats and like the creams and the butters. So being able to, it's hard to replicate that same feeling that you get from healthier, clean food. So typically people think that what's considered healthier eating is like grilled chicken with very minimal seasoning, broccoli, brown rice, you know, salad. After a while, you're you get exhausted from eating the same thing, and then it, you increase your pro the probability of you actually going to your old lifestyle because you don't like what you're eating. Yeah, it might be healthier and fuels you, but if you can't even get by week three, if you can't even stomach the idea of swallowing it, it's not for you. You know, so there are ways where you can kind of um, have your palate anticipate what you're eating next without looking at your food like it's healthy, but I don't want to eat this. Yeah. And that's where I feel like where people end up falling off is like the, your brain is wired to feel good with feel good foods. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't feel good going in, it's not going to feel good coming in here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, I mean, that's a great point. So to do that, to switch that up a little bit, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm thinking that um, kind of, playing with different types of spices would do that. But what, are there some other ways in which you, like you mentioned about fats or creams or things like, are there other, is it cooking techniques or is it certain things that, how you change that up? Yes. So there's cooking techniques as far as if you want to do grilling, sauteing, switching things up a lot, I'm braising, um, just really be able to maximize the amount of flavor that you get out of stuff. And if you're a pasta person, you don't have to give up your pastas. Like, for instance, if you love spaghetti, use shirataki noodles, use tofu noodles, yeah. you know, use the chickpea. Uh, there's so many different, they have even cauliflower, cauliflower come, came out now with a linguine version mm -hmm. of um, pasta, which is delicious. So it's not about clean, giving it up completely. It's looking at it from a different angle, saying, all right, it may not be the gluten, that I'm looking for, but I'm, I'm, I'm still going to get that sense of slurp that I get from the pasta, you know? Yeah. You know, the other thing that, that, um, I think really supports what you're talking about, you know, when we were doing CrossFit together, uh, and I, I'm going to find, there's a picture. I know that's you and I jumping on a box together, like midair. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find that and post it <laughs> later. Um, but when we would do CrossFit together and Leo, who, you, who owns Veracity, um, mm -hmm he would have us do things where we weren't using the same kinds of muscles. And the reason why that's mm -hmm. important, as you know, is it fires up things in our body that we didn't use before. It fires up your metabolism. And one of the things I learned from one of the nutritionists who's connected to Biggest Loser, it makes sense. He said, what happens is, and I know I still do the same thing, we robotically eat the same types of things, prepare the same types of ways, and our body gets conditioned to that so that it actually doesn't metabolically, it's not forced to change and, and fire things differently. So mm -hmm. what I love is I tell people all the time, you really, 
And when I'm telling them, I'm telling myself, you really need to change up your diet, try some different things. Mm -hmm. What I love about what you're adding to this is now a whole new dimension about the idea of palate ex exhaustion, because what you said is a thousand percent correct. People that want to change what they're doing or they go on a diet, you, we all have experienced it. You get a few weeks in, not even too long, and you're like, oh, my God, if I, do I have to eat this same mm -hmm. thing again? You know, so I think you and I talked about this before. My main purpose of this having you come on today, I wanted people to do a few things. I wanted them to know who you were. I'm going to make sure that they're visiting where you're located. Go take a look at your website and all that. Be able to look at your website, Instagram and understand what you're doing. And anybody's kind of in our local area because we live near each other mm -hmm. can tap into what you're doing, you know, from that perspective. But I can see us getting together in your in your test kitchen and doing some things where we can have you kind of visually do that. So you and I talked about it, but we will do that down the road. I think there's so many ways in which you can let people know more about this overall. Definitely. So, um, Let's talk a little bit also, just because I know we talk about well-being on going beyond the scope but scale, but a lot of times what we do a lot of times is we're also talking about people that are entrepreneurs because the whole idea of going beyond the scale is there's two parts to it. For people to live the life that they love mm -hmm. and live it well. And to me, you are a great example of a mentor that says, I'm living the life that I love. You described you went to school, but you knew what you're passionate about and you stayed with it and COVID comes along and you figured out how to shift with that. So on that end, you're doing that. And the way that you're doing what you're doing, you're not only living well, but you're showing other people to do that. So how did you, it's, how did you move from, I believe you had a job at one time you're doing Katie, but how did you move into, and what's it been like for you to be a woman entrepreneur? A long, a long time coming. Okay. You know, like sometimes life will throw, life will force you to be um, what you've always asked the universe to become. Whether or not you're afraid to do it or not, there have been years back when I've been saying, you know what, I really should start doing my thing. Because you end up, when you get to, especially in your, in your career, when you get into a, a position where you're no longer happy, that you start to create unhappy environments. for you to go um and i said like if you happy where at figure out where you can take that time right at that point and figure out where your happiness resides so life will show you and then COVID hit you know and i was like this the time is now because if i don't do this now i i i always looked at myself okay my what will my past self tell me what will my future self tell me will my past self tell me like why didn't you do it will my future self tell me i wish you would have done it mm. or will my past self tell me me, I'm glad you did it. And when my future self tell me, I'm glad you did it. And that's the conversation that I wanted to have between my past and my present. Like what type of, how are they going to look at me as a person right now and see whether, how am I fueling that kind of energy that's coming out going forward? That's great. No that's regrets. Great. That's, I love the way that you kind of talk about that dance with yourself to really get clear about that. And I, that's, I think that's where a lot of times people are like, well, should I pay attention to my past or pay attention to my future? But it's like, it's important because you really can answer that question on those two places and then whatever you're doing now. So when you're doing, you're doing the whole thing, um, when you're doing things, are you the one man band or do you, when you pick up a project or you're catering, are you then accessing, you have a, a pool of people that support you or, and what do you do as far as like kitchen and all that? Right. So it did, like if the more volume I get, then I'll ha I'll call people in and like, oh, hey, I need help. But right when you're starting off, you, it's that gray area where it's like, all right, I can't afford to put somebody full time. But like at this particular time, I need help, you know. So I'm at that point where it's like I'm getting closer and closer um, to the point where I might like have to take on stuff because it's, it's a lot that's going on. And also like I, I understood the more, okay. So the more you start going into what you want to do, you, it, you, it really gets to cent you get to centralize exactly what you're looking for and what your intentions are with your business. So I know that like, I want to focus on meal delivery services and virtual cooking classes, because I feel like that's the educational point that um, thrives my, um, my will to continue to give out, give back to people. So I've decided, I decided to like, you know, give up the catering part because I was like, this is not for me and focus on meal delivery services that I rotate and the cooking classes, which are very educational. 
Um, so once I found that out, I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to, to exactly what my intentions are for my for my um, business. The other thing, so we've talked about your background. We talked mm-hmm. about you know you and how you and I met in terms of uh, you know with Starbucks and CrossFit and Flywheel. Um, your background, education wise, your passion, all that. As I mentioned in the, in the lead up to this, you have had a challenge that was challenging, obviously, for your well-being perspective. But what I love about it is instead of you just succumbing to whatever that was, you've been using um, your cooking and your your whole meal preparation as part of the way for your well-being, which I think is really helpful for other people to hear how it's helping you and then how they should consider that for themselves. So kind of give us a little bit of a background of what was that, Jess, that really was that big well-being challenge for you or what it still is in certain regards? Yeah. So um, when I was t- almost 25, um, it happened while I was at Star- I was actually working at Starbucks. Like I was, there was, I was holding a cup and I couldn't feel it. And I was like, mm. "This is odd." And it, it started significantly getting worse. And I was showering. I was like, "I can't feel my stomach. Like, what's going on?" I get foggy brain. Went to the doctor. They did like the MRI and all this stuff. They said, "You know what? You have regress from missing MS." I was like, "No, I don't. Like, that's not in my family. Like, what are you doing?" So. They initially started me with medication. I was like, you know what? Let me just do my research and see, like, what can I, what am I doing that's facilitating this? And it's part of stress and is what I was eating. I was ridiculously stressed out and I was eating crap. Like, I stopped doing CrossFit. I stopped doing a lot of things that caused my, my body and stuff to become more stressful. So I felt like me taking an initiative to take control of my life. I was like, I'm not going to be that person that's going to be on medication all her, her life. You know, like if I know something is coming, let me figure out what's going on around me. What am I eating? What am I being stressed out? How can I control? Let me start meditating. Cause I'm, that's not happening, you know? And it's, that's not for everyone. It's not for every case, but for right. me early on, I knew that worked and I stuck with that. And I'm glad I did because I would have been still taking, assuming that, you know, this is what the doctor says, I'll do it, you know? And, and that comes with a type A personality that I have quote unquote, it's like, all right, let me just figure it out first and then. Um, but it also comes from, I, I like my body to do as much fighting as it can before I resort to secondary options, so. That's a great story. And one, one the other day I was talking about um, where each of us, I mean, there's more medical technology and solutions that are out there, but the critical part, which is exactly what you did, is each of us, we don't have to be the doctor, but mm-hmm. we're really responsible for our health and well-being. And I think, unfortunately, what happens for some people, they will get a diagnosis and then they succumb to it. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of stories like exactly what you're talking about. You could have done what would have been that course, which probably would not have served you as well. as Because I remember... Like I knew who you were when we were working out and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden like you were you had changed and then you were just you were kind of in this downward spiral and you I mm-hmm. could tell the energy what was going which makes sense. You were concerned, but obviously you took the bull by the horns and you figured out how to do that. And I think the other part that a lot of people need to understand exercise is great. And exercise is stressful. So mm-hmm. when people don't realize that they CrossFit's really cool, but it can be dangerous depending on who your instructor is because you can just get wild and do some crazy thing. Mm -hmm. But most people don't really realize that probably between mental health issues now and everything, the biggest factor that many people are not paying attention to are the collective stressors, almost to do a stress audit of that. And you did that from exercise perspective, food and all that. So that if you got to go back and do something with a doctor, you at least have taken care of healing yourself to a place mm-hmm. where it's not just medicine related because it is not going to be helpful if you aren't still involved in that process. So I think that's an impart- inspiring story for people to pay attention to. Um, for you, what's the prognosis of that? What, I guess there's different degrees of MS in terms of how yeah. it progresses. So what, what what is yours on the spectrum of what that? So mine's is the lighter end. Like I, I'm not, it's, it, it can only get but so word. Like the worst is it, has, it gets, that's it. Like I have one toe that like it will never come back kind of thing, but that's the worst of God. Like I've, my best friend's um, brother, when he was diagnosed, and then he died four years later. And wow. you have people that live for it for like 20, 30 plus years. Depends on what type you have. Um, but it's really about, it's stress related, you know? Like it's really about controlling. It's it's also about the mental challenges. that Because people think that, all right, well, the things that are around you, you know, it, and it runs deeper than that. It's the conversation that you have about yourself in your mind 
you know, about the, the deep thoughts because that also fuels negative energy towards you. And it, it, also, it causes you almost you to erode mm-hmm. on the inside. You feel it and you start to feel like your blood pressure goes up, you get headaches more, you know, and it's just, it, I've learned that the more positive affirmations that I have yeah. in my mind, the, the less stress I become. You know, even though you can't control what your external environment, but you can control what comes in and out of here. Yeah. What I love about what you've shared is it's like you've got the the, the experience from a physiology perspective from what you've learned. You've got the experience of being a, a successful woman entrepreneur. Um, you've got the, the whole, I think, the philosophy of food, how you look at food is exactly what's necessarily necessary in this world where we really want to. We want to be able to expand our palate. We want to be able to really love what we're eating. Mm -hmm. And I think the other part is the the mind process and the the thought process that you're sharing with people. I think you've got a whole world of great things to be able to share with people. And I'm I'm looking forward because I can see this becoming um, more conversations with you. Um, with that being said, like I told you before, we're, we're going to come back and figure, you and I'll talk about it. We'll figure out some different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sooner or, later, sooner or later, I think it'd be fun sometime you and I get together for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We have a conversation right. over something. We might visit some things. I think we can do some fun stuff with you doing some cooking as well. Um, with that being said, is are there any things like going forward, like in the next five to 10 years, is there a, a particular it doesn't have to be, but is there a destination or something you're kind of like, you know what, when you talk about the past self and the future self, is there something you've been saying to your future self that's kind of not pushing you, but pulling you towards that? Something that, is it a restaurant? Is it a cookbook? Is it expanded services? What would that be? It's that, like it's expanded services. So what okay. I'm like right now, this is actually what I'm working on is like my five-year goal. Um, I want to be able to put my platform, because right now I, I service the local Essex County Middlesex but right now I'm doing testing and working with a cold pack to be able to um, put my my delivery services on e-commerce so that I can deliver cold packs and reach out to more people. So I'm looking to expand that a lot more. Um, I'm doing a lot of testing, a lot of development, a lot of research on other companies, that, what they do, how they get their packaging. So that's kind of where I'm at right now on my five-year term. So, so I know when I want to retire. Like I know what age I want to retire. So it's just a matter of staying focused. That's great. So with what you're doing, um, let's just, in wrapping this up, let's talk about what are the best places. And Gloria will post some of the banners here. We'll put it also on some of the other things for people to see. And I'm going to go back and I'm, I've am i got to tell you, I don't love the idea of the word palette being spelled wrong. I will go back and correct that. Um, <laughs> but um, what are some, what, what are some, th- like you mentioned virtual cooking class. So yes. let's just talk about, I want to know how people can can actually tap into what you're doing. I mean, obviously you can go to your website, which we have here, but virtual classes. And then right. once again, what do they do if they wanted to be able to get some meal delivery local to where you're at? Yeah, so they could go on my website and subscribe to the mailing list. And then every Monday morning by 9 a.m., the, the menu changes. So once you subscribe, I send out the menu for that week. And it'll also be posted on, on Monday mornings. Um, they, it gets taken down Sunday. So once you set, once you put in your your order is due every Sunday by 9 a.m. and then the men, the menu changes Mondays 9 a.m. So you subscribe to the mailing list, um, and it'll get weekly updates on what's going on. It's um, so like for right now I'm doing like a Mother's Day packaging where it's like tapas and wine, where you could kind of experience like different um, tapas style um, course dinners, and it's paired with wine and it gets sent to your door. So just like little tidbits that'll be sent to you if you subscribe to my newsletters. And what's the and and what about the virtual cooking classes? Um, they can subscribe as well. If they wanted to do um, any type of um, classes independently, like with their companies, they can just send out an inquiry at my email address um, on my website. Okay. So we're going to come back with you more and more and more. But anything before we close this out, Jess? Anything new? I mean, you don't have to. But is there anything you want to share or something to consider? I don't know. Yeah, just most importantly, just um, I really want to, especially during like during this year, 2020, I want to emphasize to everyone that it's okay. You're okay. We're all here. You're not alone. We're all going through this. Like you're not the only person that's trying to transition or you might not, you might have thought that everybody has a hot or summer body or whatever. Everybody started working out. I'm not there yet. It's okay. We're in 2021. It's a new year. 
There's a new day. There's there will always be tomorrow. Just as long as you know that there will be there's hope for tomorrow, then yeah. for you there will always be a tomorrow. So keep reminding yourself of that. And just one little small change is here and there. It becomes you become a better person every day. No Great. pressure. Great. Well, I think you guys can tell from what Jessica shared, uh, it's really the tip of the iceberg. And I, I really highly suggest you take a look at what she's doing. Look at her gallery of food. This stuff looks crazy delicious. Um, take a look, um, sign up and subscribe to what she's doing. If you have any questions, if there's something that you see that you say, hey, you know what, why don't you guys do such and such? We're always open. So if you have a thought or an idea, please share it, put it in the comments. And you can also send anything that's related to this. If you want to do it and you don't want to put in a comment, go to share it at jlynnjacobs.com privately and, and we'll take a look at it. So Jessica, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the universe sending you a few days ago to me. And thank you for asking me to be part of American Heart Association. I look forward to doing that. And thank you for your generosity of time and being a yes. I love when people are yeses. Yes, people are my favorite people. Thank you. Thanks for being a yes and appearing today. And um, as always, uh, you you give so much to so many people. And I can tell that you're going to continue to do that. So I'm, I'm so tickled. Thank you. Here. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you guys.